Good morning, Discover Life Church. It's so wonderful that you came in, decided to join us today. We have such a powerful message that's going to be coming from Pastor Manny. My name is Sarah Pereira, and here with me is... And I'm Hannah Norton. We're both on the Timothy team and serve in yeah. plenty of different capacities. <laughs> oh my God. They pull you everywhere, but it's really such an amazing opportunity to be able to actually like serve and do yeah. things for the kingdom, you know? We're so active. I feel like, I feel like I'm here every night, which is not a bad thing. I'm not complaining but, at all. Absolutely not. I love it. Um, yeah, so we're so excited that you logged on today, and we're just looking forward to what we're going to hear about today That's in great. our continued series of Is It Necessary? But before we want to get that to that, we want to talk a little bit about Mother's Day. You want to talk about that? Right. Yes. So it's right around the corner, and like I always forget like what day it is exactly, and it's literally just, I'm so excited for it because I ended up finding some really, really adorable, like like a little picture frame with a moon on it, and it's held, like, it was on Instagram. <laughs> but it was like it was advertising this thing of like oh hey this was what the moon looked like on the day that you were born or this is what the moon looked like when i was born but like happy mother's day like it's just That's something so cool. really really cute i saw that i was like i'm gonna get that for my mom purchase <laughs> <laughs> i've been like dropping hints to noah like um i have two kids if you don't know me from online um and i've been like okay well i want this if you want to get it for me that'd just, be great <laughs> please. but also like if he just wants to like take the kids out of the house and let me just be by myself all day that'd be fine too um <laughs> so i'm a stay-at-home mom so i don't get a lot of private quiet time um, yeah. So, yes, but Mother's Day is on May 12th, That's which right. is next Sunday. We're Absolutely. gonna have a, a very powerful service. Invite your moms or anybody that you see as a mother figure in your life. And it's sure. gonna just gonna be a special day for moms here at Discover Life. Yes, so, so is it necessary series? It's been ongoing for the past several weeks now yes. and it has been amazing. Like really, like some of these questions that we thought were, or that you might think is like, a no-brainer yeah intuitive right yeah. nowadays they it do get put to question and a lot yeah. of times like sometimes a lot of christians we put we get in our own head and we sometimes wonder oh well i am justified because i'm covered by by the blood therefore god has mercy on me and yeah. i can kind of like ease back and not really put too much effort into certain areas of my life when yeah. in fact it's quite the opposite by the grace of god we are able to push and strive for better strive for yeah. more for his kingdom so yeah. And there's a lot of apathy, like with the with just the community of the church since COVID, and um, yeah. so is it necessary? And it always is going to be a resounding yes. <laughs> yes, it's always. It's like a rhetorical <laughs> question that we know is the answer. Yes. Right. <laughs> so there's been several weeks. I think one, two, three, four. Today will be the yes. fifth week. Right. And um, we started with is it necessary, like mm -hmm. to be with the body and stuff like that. Yes. And then we went to bear good fruit. Is it necessary to bear good fruit? And then it has have a be of uh, have radical obedience You're right. and to be battle ready and then today we're going to talk about invite culture our pastor manny is going to talk about invite culture so right i'm really excited for that as well just because i know like when you enter a church what is the first face that you see when you walk through those doors yeah. it's going to be a greeter right you hope to be invited you hope yeah. to feel welcome and in the end i've heard several testimonies as well during this past timothy team meeting that yeah. we had where they this is pastor and uh, Andy had asked us, hey, when you, on your first visit to a new church, did you remember the coffee that was given to you? Do you remember who gave it to you? Do you remember who was singing on worship? Do you remember who gave the sermon? But do you remember who greeted you at the door and yeah. made you feel welcome? And every single one was like, yes, I know exactly. They gave and me a, a strong hug or I they gave me a good like handshake. all of us had the same person though. Yeah. Who was yours? <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I think it was just my sister because she was oh, the one okay. who walked me into this church. <laughs> well, yeah, so we're so glad you're here this morning, and we're well, we're so excited yes. for the today's service. Just be expectant at home, be active. T type in the chat to the host. Good you, morning, you know, DLC. We love seeing you. I want you to Look stand you to service. your feet. Bye -bye. Worship the Lord and seek His presence. From generation 
Jesus, you are so good. Father, you are holy, Jesus. You are holy, holy you are, and holy you always will be, Father. Jesus, we are so thankful for you, Father, because we're able to go to God's throne room and we can worship at his feet because of all that you've done for us, Jesus. And so we honor you, we glorify you, we give you all the praise and all the mercy goes to you. Jesus, we love you, Father, we love you, we love you. Jesus.
contain the weight of your name, Father God. Jesus, you are worthy, your name. Jesus, Jesus, just the mention of your name. Chains are broken, Father God. Hearts are mended, Jesus. Father, we worship you. We worship your holy, holy name, Father. Psalms 24 says, lift up your heads, all you gates, lift up your heads, the ancient of days, ancient of doors, be ye lifted up and let the glory of the Lord come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. Who is this King of glory? The Lord mighty in battle. God, we came and asked you to dwell here, God. Not just in this place, God, but in this space. In our hearts, oh God. Have your way, Lord Jesus. We surrender everything to you, God. Everything we are, God. Everything we're not. We surrender to you, God. Our focus is you, Lord Jesus. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. And every man will bow down and say you are King. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King. Sing King of Glory. King of Glory, fill this place. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. Yes, the world.
before Gail sang, she quoted Psalms 24, verse 7 through 10. I need you to get a picture of this before we move forward. It's a psalm written by King David, and King David uses the metaphorical language describing him returning back from battle with the spoils of victory. Now, but yet he writes this psalm not about himself. Come on, come on. He writes it to the people of Israel regarding God, the Father. And it's a tradition in most empires and kingdoms, particularly in the ancient world, that the army would, when they returned back from battle or war in victory, they would form a parade. And they will approach the city, but yet the city's gates are closed and everybody, whoever can, are around the city walls and they're watching. And then an announcement is made and the horns are blown for the gates to open up. And as the gates open up, the king of the nation, along with the spoils of victory and the heroes of the war, come into the city. Now, David did not write that about himself. He wrote that about God, and he's using metaphorical language of saying that many of us, we are a walled city. We have our walls around us. Come on. And yet the king of glory yes. who has already gone before us, yes. who has yes. already won the battle, on, is wanting on. to come into the city. Yes. And that's why the psalmist said, lift up your heads, all ye gates, and let them be lifted up, you ancient doors, and let the king 
of glory come in. Then there's a question, who is the king of glory? The Lord God Almighty, the Lord mighty in battle. The God that has won the war for you. Yes. But the question is, are we lifting up our gates? Come on. See, we can attend church and watch somebody else worship for us. Come on. Come on. And we can watch somebody opening their gates, but unless your gates open, Come on. Come on. nothing Come on. happens. So I'm going to ask you one more time. Well, I'm going to demand it today. Lift up your head, all your gates. Let them be lifted up, your ancient doors. Let the King of Glory come in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord God Almighty. The Lord strong in battle. I just want to be with you. Testament, remember the message of the kingdom of God is that God's kingdom was coming to earth. John the Baptist prophesies this about Jesus, and he says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. In other words, it's right there in front of you, but yet Jesus says, the kingdom of God must live within you. There has to be an opening of our hearts to allow for the kingdom of God, the domain of the king, the rulership of the king to dwell inside of our hearts. A lot of us, we want what the king has to offer and we're willing to jump through the hoops, but we don't want the king to be inside of us. Because if, give me some more mic, please. I'm losing my voice. Give me more mic here on the, on the floor. Thank you. Now listen, we have to open up our hearts to him. And when we open up our hearts to him, it's not a thought. It's literally, Lord, take over my life. I submit to your lordship. I am here to serve you. I'm going to give you my absolute all. That is lift up your heads or your gates. So one of the things that Jesus instituted is the receiving of communion. And, 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 and he referenced the Passover meal. If you understand it, if you don't understand, I don't have time to unpack it for you. But it happened back at the last plague where the angel of death came and killed the firstborn of all of Egypt. But the angel of death was killing anyone who did not have the blood of the lamb over the doorpost of their home. And yet the Passover meal was instituted where a lamb had to be sacrificed, a perfect lamb had to be sacrificed and then eaten. And the blood of the lamb over the doorpost of the home so judgment won't come upon the family. All the Jewish families had to do that. And they celebrated that recognition of God delivering Israel or the children of God out of slavery and into freedom. And it had nothing to do with them. It had everything to do with a spotless lamb. Yes, yes, yes. Innocence had to be 
killed in order for the guilty to be saved. That's it, that's it, that's it. Paints the picture of Jesus when John looks at him and says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And yet Jesus, on that same Passover celebration, changes it. And there's no lamb to cook. And the disciples are like, man, what's happening? And Jesus said, I'm the lamb. Yeah. yeah. But instead, what he did, he took bread. Yeah. And then he broke it. And he said, I'm changing this now. He goes, this is my body. Signified within the bread. There's nothing special about the bread. It's, it's symbolic of us understanding that the broken body had to be eaten, consumed. Lift up your heads on your knees. Yes. Let them be lifted up, your ancient yes. doors. Yes. Let the King of Glory come, come on, in. Come on, come on. Who is the King of Glory? You, you guys are getting this, right? On, and then the same Lord, thing with the, with the fruit of the vine, the wine. It had to be crushed and then taken and consumed. So we can be one with him. This is all symbolic. But this is the table of the Lord. Where we once again say, Father, it's no longer me. It's you in me. It's you in me. So here's what I want to do. We got Eric. We have John here. I want all of us to take communion today. Now, before you come and receive the elements, if you have any sin that you are lingering on and don't want to repent from, I suggest you repent right now and then number two if you have an offense against your brother or sister either here or anywhere in your family or outside you have to immediately repent from that when we receive communion we have to make sure that in our own hearts we're not doing it without referencing or understanding the holiness of what we're so if that's what's happening right now, you need to just go ahead, bow your heads, and begin to repent. But you need to receive communion today. So if you're ready, come with your family. And there's two lines here. Come and receive as the, as the worship team plays.
gathered, together with his disciples, took the bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body, which will be broken for you. I can imagine what the disciples were thinking. He's never done this before. What's, what's happening? This is different. This is not the passive we're used to. They've done that all their life. But after three and a half years, the disciples, I think, already knew not to question Jesus, but actually to ask questions afterwards. The disciples each took the bread and they partook. And I wonder whether he even quoted Isaiah 53 for he was talking about the suffering servant, which is the Messiah who was about to be crucified. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes and the, the whips on his back, we are healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I have seen during communion a lot of people be healed yes, in their bodies yes, physically. Yes. Physically. Because they partook and they allowed the king of glory to come in. Now, this is symbolic. God is not in the bread. But the father is right there at your heart's door waiting for you to open up your gates and let him in. As a family and as a church, let's partake of the body together. he took the cup and gave thanks and then he said this is my blood which will be shed for the forgiveness of sins I can imagine the disciples thinking back they, they were taught that after Adam and Eve sinned and they tied fig leaves around their private areas because they all of a sudden became self-conscious. Yeah. And they were naked, so they hid. And when God called them, they said they were hiding. And God says, where are you, Adam? And Adam says, well, we heard you, and we were naked, so we hid. And the Lord told him, he said, who told you you were naked? Because sin causes self-consciousness. Yeah. And the enemy only speaks to your mind when we're self-conscious. Yeah. We make permanent decisions on temporary circumstances because of our insecurity and self-consciousness. We develop an appetite for things that please us and pleasure us that are outside of the framework of the, that the Father had for us. And what the Father did, God the Father, he said, take off those fig leaves and I have clothing for you. This is in the, in the Bible. The Bible says that he killed, it didn't say what animal, but some animal had to be killed so Adam and Eve can be covered. And at that moment in time, start, began the institution of what they call the animal sacrifice. And which is the killing of innocent blood being shed to cover the sinfulness of humanity. And for years, that's how they worship God until Jesus he said, I'm the last one. I'm the last one. And my blood will be shed for you. Once and for all. And then Jesus is teaching this to his disciples. He says, when you partake of the fruit of the vine that was crushed, you do this in remembrance of me. That once and for all, our sins are forgiven. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Again, nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
Let's partake together as a family. Sing King of Glory. King. you're allowing the you're lifting up your heads and your gaze to the king of glory anybody in this place come on now listen I know human nature we had a, a, a very prominent person in this church had a uh, had a um, destination wedding and there is a large number of people that stayed over at the city where this wedding took place they're enjoying service right now online which means that you're here Amen. and you, you know and I understand human nature that we there's more synergy when there's more people in the room but you're here so I'm gonna need you to communicate to me that you're receiving something today so I might need your help today while I preach I might need your help today as we continue are y'all breathing today you're not a spectator, you're a participator. That's it, that's it. Come on, come on. Now those who are watching, they're participating backslash spectating. But those who are here today, Jesus is in the house. Can you stand on your feet and give God the greatest and awesome clap and shout? Let me hear you! Let me hear you! Father, we honor you, we worship you, we give you thanks. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Amen. 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 All right. I'm trying to. It, it's, it, it really is. You want to say something, my love? It's so good to be in the house. It's good to be home. Oh, man. Guys, you have no idea how much I miss all of your beautiful faces and how much I miss my dogs and my kids and my bed and my pillow. And wow, wow, wow. But guys, what, what an incredible day to be in the presence of the Lord. Come on, guys. It's, it's in services just like this when all it takes is expe expectation and faith connecting with one another. And I believe that miracles, signs, and wonders can happen on a day just like today. Amen? Amen? Come on. It's up to us. It's up to us to enter in. It's up to us to expect. It's up to us to have the faith. Come on. So I believe that God wants to do something incredible this morning in us and through us. And the key word is in with us. Amen. Because it's not just about what he can do for us, but it's about how we can take what he's done now and then testify to the next person. Amen. And say, hey, if God did it for me, Sarah, he can do it for you. If God did it for me, Tiffany, he can do it for you. Come on. If God did it for me, Jose, he can do it for you. Come on. It's all about encouraging us as a body. Amen. 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 So, so this week as I was going over some stuff, my pastor... She happened to text me and ask me how I was doing. Of course, it's been a crazy week. And if you know my schedule here lately, it's, it's a crazy schedule. But she said, you know what I've learned? And I wrote down these words in my Bible. She says, letting go is liberation. And I went, ooh, 
ooh, come on, come on, now that'll get you. That's like, ooh, I mean, that'll cause you to bend. But that's so true. It doesn't matter if we're cleaning out our closet. It doesn't matter if we're trying to decide what to save, what to throw away. It doesn't matter even the places in our hearts. When we let go and we allow this King of Glory to enter into all of those hidden places, come on, we all have them. Come on, come on, and we we, we have to dust off the cobwebs on some of those places in our heart. But when you let go and you say, God, be the King of Glory, come in, come into my life. Come on, be the Lord strong and mighty. Be the Lord mighty in battle. Be my deliverer. Be my savior. Be my healer. Come on, come on. Whatever you need, come on. When you let go, there is freedom. When you let go, there is liberation because you realize, God, it's no longer me, but it's you. It's less of me and more of you. Less of me and more of you. So guys, I I believe that God has something special for you this morning. And I don't care if you're watching online, all that Tampa crew, God's got something special for you. But just because you're in the house today, he's got something special for each and every one. I believe it, mama, uh, for each and every one of you this morning. Do you believe that with me? Well, come on one more time with your voice and with your hands, whatever you got, just give him a shout of praise right. this morning. Come on, be his word. This lady has been preaching all over the world, and I have been her armor bearer, <laughs> taking her all over the world. And we, listen, for those who are visiting, whether we've been gone three weeks, and oh boy, we got some incredible pastors in this house. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, how many here can give God some praise and thanks for Pastor Sandy and Andrea, who led the charge here and uh, ministered the word of the Lord? and uh, help run this ministry. And without them, we, you know, you know, DLC will not be DLC. This coming life without Pastor Andy and Andrea. We're, we're thankful for that. Um, our schedule here, we're not gonna be gone on Sunday until when? The end of the month. Sorry. I thought I, th I thought it was all summer, but okay. But anyways, my, my point here is this. We're, we're here and we are engaging prophetically yes, into what yes, God has yes, for this yes, house. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to take 90 yeah. seconds. Take 90 seconds and greet five or six yes, people yes, yes. and let them know. And ask them this question. Come is on. the king of glory on, in you? you, go. you is go. the king of glory in you? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Good morning, Discover Life Church. As you make your way back to your seats, 
Come on, say good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. What an incredible day to be in the presence of the Lord. I know I just said that, but guys, it's worth saying again. Come on, what a great day to be in God's presence. Thank you, Father, for your presence here and what you're going to do in the lives of your people this morning. Amen. Well, my name is Victoria Rivera, and I am one of the lead pastors here. My good-looking husband was the one with me up on the stage. He's still trying to make his way to his seat because he's trying to say hi to every one of you this morning. But anyways, it's so good to be here and to be home with all of you. If you are here for the very first time, there is a connect card in the seat back pocket in front of you or maybe even behind you if you're on the front row. If you would do us a favor and fill out that information and you can either turn it into our connect kiosk, but what we would really like for you to do is to hold it up high. We're not going to to embarrass you, but we're going to take it from you and we're going to give you a gift to say thank you for joining us this morning. Amen. And if you are joining us online on that Tampa crew, woohoo! it's good to see you this morning. But if you're joining us online and you are a visitor, you can actually go to dlc.live, hit the connect tab, fill out the information. And when we get your information, we will also mail you a gift to say thank you for joining us today. Y'all ready for the word? Y'all ready? for some announcements all right we got our listening ears on that's what I used to tell my kids put your listening ears on you got some important announcements because we want to see you connected and serving in discover life church so you can be all that God's called you to be amen we love you guys amen amen, amen. well welcome again it is good to see you my name is Laura um, and you are I am Andrea <laughs> you're a member of our Timothy team Yes, I am. Um, so, good morning. Um, we have some exciting stuff coming up next we do. week. Yes, it's, ne it's next all week? next week. So, first off, starting off with the best, one of the best days of the year is Mother's Day. Mother's Day! Guys, Mother's Day at DLC is oftentimes bigger than Easter. So, this is a huge service, and we're so excited to honor moms. We want yeah. you to Invite, invite. Yes, whatever. invite all the moms. If you have cousins that are moms, sisters that are moms, bring them in. Let's honor them together and let's praise God while we're at it. Um, and that is May 12th, 10 a.m. May 12th, 10 a.m., yeah. <laughs> so then the following Friday on the 17th, ladies, we have a special coffee and conversation coming up. So keep those invites coming. Get them to come on Sunday and then say, come with me again on Friday night. Um, this is for ladies of all ages. This week is going to be all the king's daughters. So did you know that you were a king's daughter? I am a king's daughter. You are a king's daughter. Did you daughter. know that you are a king's daughter? I'm a king's daughter. So all the king's daughters, all the ladies of DLC, we want to see you on Friday night at 7. Um, we're going to actually have a full dinner, not just snacks, so that's fun. And then um, we do need you to register for this one. So if you go to discoverlifeatl.com slash events. And if you are bringing a guest, you can even register for them as well. That's right. There you go. Easy peasy. And then lastly, we want to talk about lunch with pastors. Yes. If you are just, you've been coming in and you just want to get to know DLC, what's it all about? And you want to get our patent to know our pastors and the leadership team and what we'll believe, you can come to lunch with pastors. And that is the following Sunday, June 23rd. <laughs> Several weeks later. Yeah. Yeah. June 23rd. June 23rd. Um, and that is directly after service. Yes. And that will be led by Pastor Manny and Pastor Victoria. Right. So new faces, we want to see you come hang out. Um, register so we know you're coming. Any dietary restrictions, et cetera, we will do our best to accommodate that. That registration link is going to be discoverlifeatl.com slash lunch. Fun stuff. That's all, right, all so announcements. That's all we've got for today. We're going to turn it over to Pastor Andy for the offering. All right. Can I, can I get a round of applause real quick for just everything that's happened this morning? Can we get a round of applause for this building? I don't, I don't know if, there's not a lot of people here that were here when we were setting up in a school building every Sunday morning where we were hanging hundreds of yards of pipe and drape and trying to spray 18 bottles of Febreze to get the smell of fifth graders, fifth graders lunches 
out of a cafeteria and and then trying to figure out the air conditioning and then the power because we didn't have power conditioners. And then every week was different with the sound and the lights and, and the childcare. And then the, the doors were locked or the doors weren't locked. And all of these, I mean, everything was different every single week. And, and, and I think now we get in this really awesome place of being able to come into a building that we call our own. And man, it's awesome, right? Yeah. And we come in and we get to enjoy this awesome service in this awesome room with this awesome wall with children's ministry that's just killing it. Like, do your kids come home and talk about Jesus and talk about what they've learned, right? Like, do you guys understand that what we get to do as a church is incredible, right? I just feel like I got a little bit less energy than I was expecting when I said that. Like, are we excited about what our kids are learning? Are we excited about what's happening at Discover Life Church? And on top of it all, we, we've got pastors that are answering the call to go around the world and talk to people about Jesus and lead women to Jesus. I could sit here all day long because we, we could clap about this and we should be able to cheer about this and celebrate it. And I just think it's worth celebrating. But to celebrate that, what we really have to do is celebrate everybody here who's given. And, and I know, I know we say, no, 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 it's God, it's God. Yeah, yeah, it's God, please. I understand that it's God, but can we give credit where credit is due as well? Because in order for all of this to happen, God has moved in your hearts and you have decided to give. And there is money that has come in and it has been spent to make sure that our children are getting the education that they need in the kids ministry and the stuff that is happening here and the building that we have and the power is on and the, the gas is on and the water is running and these are all miracles and it's because the people who have decided to give have given. So can we take that energy that we had and like triple it and can you guys give yourself a round of applause if you've given? <laughs> Wednesday night, Pastor Manny says something that I had to think about a couple of times because comments like this confuse me sometimes. It's, um, I have to, hang on. It is possible to give and not love. That's right. But it is impossible to love and not give. And so when we talk about giving, I know oftentimes if you're visiting a church or, you know, you get this like, oh, it has nothing to do with like, oh, we're going to fleece people or pat them down for money. It has everything to do with the condition of the heart. And what we're interested in at Discover Life Church is your heart. And so when we come up and we talk about that, we want to celebrate what God is doing in our church. And what God is doing in our church is oft, often related to the condition of your heart. Does that make sense? So we do. We take an offering. And it's important that we do because we're doing a lot of incredible things, not just in Lawrenceville, Georgia, but in Iceland. I, just, I, have to, I get confused with that, too. It's Iceland, Greenland. It's a whole thing. Um, Europe. Thailand, Thailand, is that one somewhere they've been? Not yet, name it. Thailand, you guys are gonna go there, it's gonna happen. Mexico, I mean, everywhere. Like you just throw a dart at a globe and they're gonna go there. And so God is moving. And I think it's important that we remember that when we're gonna give. So we, we pray and we thank you guys and you know, we just thank God for what he's doing. But on top of that, you guys are doing a great job. Thank you if you have given, thank you. So we are gonna take up the offering. We have four ways to give. You can give today in person if you are um, the seat back in front of you. Also a confusing statement <laughs> to me. The seat back in front of you, <laughs> there's an envelope, the pocket in front of you, there's an envelope and you can fill that out, put a check or cash in there and um, drop it in the um, connect kiosk there in the back. You can give online at uh, dlc.live or discoverlifeatl.com. And you click in the top right hand corner where it says give you can text 84321. If you're doing this for the first time, there's a setup process. Make sure that you select Discover Life Church in Lawrenceville, Georgia. Um, and then you can go to our app, which is my favorite way. It's not very, it's not confusing at all. It's all straightforward right there in the app. If you don't have the app, download it because there's a lot of other th great things that you can do as well. You can rewatch sermons, you can follow along with the notes, you can see our upcoming events, so you never have to say, I didn't know that was happening. It's all right there. All right, so I'm going to pray for our offering. God, we love you. God, we worship you. And it is a joy for us to be able to give. 
But we thank you for everybody in here who's given this morning. We thank you for everyone who's given throughout the week because we know that online giving is a huge way that we give. And Lord, I, I just pray right now that you begin to move in the hearts across this church of the people who have not yet made the journey into giving, that, that their hearts would begin to shift and they would. So that God, we can do even more of what you've called us to do. We can touch even more lives. And Lord, this community and this world will be impacted by Discover Life Church even more according to your vision and your purpose. We give you all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen.